waves of migration and a cross-pollination of cultures have contributed enormously to Singapore's diverse and rich food heritage. In this series, we explore cuisines, dishes and restaurants on our little island that have brought comfort to generations of Singaporeans and lionized our reputation as a foodie paradise. In this episode, we head back in time to the 1960s. Marked by cultural changes and social movements around the world, it was an era that saw the birth of Singapore as a nation and one of Singapore's first fusion food restaurants. And my makan kaki this week is celebrity chef Melvin Lee. So Denise, we've been talking about Hainanese food for a while already. Yeah. So where did you bring me this time? It's a place I'm sure you've never been before. Okay. But it's Russian food with a Hainanese twist. What? Mm -hmm. Hi, Emma! Hey, Denise. Hello! Good to have you back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melvin. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Alan. Pleasure is all mine. Wow. You know, it's been decades since I've been here, but I used to come here all the time as really? a little kid with my parents. That's wonderful. Mm. Very nice place. Thank you. Our table is waiting. Yep. Shall we? Yes. Okay, let's, go, let's, let's go. go. Before Shashlik was the Troika Room White Bear Restaurant. It was first located in Bras Basa in 1963 before moving to Liet Towers in 1966. Unfortunately, due to mounting debts, Troika shut down in 1985. And a year later, Shashlik was born. Your dad was one of the co-founders? Yes, he was one of the nine uh, former employees of Troika. Yes. Which started it all. But Troika um, ended their business in uh, in. 85. Mm -hmm. So overnight they lost their job together with eight other colleagues who were all in a similar situation. They were all um, pretty senior. They have families to feed, kids still going to school, mortgage needs to pay, and they only know how to run a restaurant. Pulled together a little bit of money and they started this restaurant. So that was the story of uh, Shastik, how it started. I came to Shastri 20 odd years ago. Our parents used to bring us here for gatherings as well as family birthday celebrations. I first came to Shastri because of her. She brought us here. I've been coming to Shash Lake since 2018, but before they renovated, uh, I, I also came before. It kept me coming back all the time. That's my first time taking a taco, trying out a taco, and I just eat straight away. I eat fish and chips, and it's very nice. It's tasty, crispy. They make Western food as well, so they always blend between Hainanese and Western food together. Yeah, But surprisingly, actually, they make very good Russian food. Yeah. Especially the borscht. Yeah. Wow. Here comes the soup. Mm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Would you like some cream to go with it? It's traditional to have cream with the borscht soup. Yes, but please. Of course, okay. we must follow tradition. This is sour cream. This is how we, we would uh, have our borscht traditionally. Thank you. Okay. Allow me to do a quick introduction. Okay, please, sure. Please. The bread yeah. is something that the old restaurant, Trika, created it 60 years ago. Oh. And he has been with us ever since. Same <laughs> recipe. Same recipe. Wow. So this is a Hainanese-style sweet butter roll. It's savoury and sweet at the same time. It pairs exceptionally well with the salted butter. Yes. And it goes very well with the borscht. Mm -hmm. So the borscht is our signature soup. Yep. It's also been with the restaurant for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And this version of Bosch is really the, the localized version. It's, it's a balanced version, the Hainanese version. Mm. So enjoy. This please. is going to bring Thank back you. so many memories. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Wow. Okay, so Denise, yes. You have to walk me through how we're going to go into this. Okay, first of all, you know, like any child, you're going to attack the bread first because For smell sure. that. It's so sweet and buttery. Look at this. You literally, it's so soft, you can literally just squash it. Yes. And then it bounces right back. It's just so soft and tender. You spread the butter into that soft, pillowy bread. Oh, instant childhood there. This is a great snack with the salted butter, but it's also so good dipped into the soup. Mm. This is like those old school bread where you find at um, the bakeries below HDB. Yes, those houses, old school right? confectionaries, yeah. right? Yeah. There's quite a lot of sugar in it, but it really balances with that salted butter, and my gosh, this soup. So do we mix the... Absolutely, because amazing. this sour cream lends the soup a little bit of tang, but it also, because it's creamy, makes the soup kind of silky. Reminds me a bit like a minestrone. Kind of, but boshed, what makes it unique is it's got beetroot in it. Like, first look, I thought it was curry. 
a little bit like curry. It looks a little bit. But then with that sour cream, you notice how this flavor profile totally yeah. changes? And then there's lots of cabbage, there's potatoes, there's carrot, and if you're lucky, you'll get a really succulent piece of beef in there. Mm. It's just hearty, it's nutritious. The beef is so tender from, you know, being stewed inside the soup. It's very tender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not tough at all. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of one of those, like, wartime poor food. You make do with whatever you can get. You scavenge all the scraps and you try to put it in a pot and you boil up a nourishing food. Yep. So, I think this was... Um, created sometime in the 17th century. Wow. And um, yeah, it's born out of winter and war. So you imagine how cold it is in Russia. This kind of soup is going to be very hearty yeah, and warm. It will hit the spot now. Mm. And for me, this is my first time trying this soup. Really? So it's your yeah. first time. And you know what? Borscht is a Russian dish. It's just that you wouldn't find the exact same thing in Russia because obviously it has evolved over time yeah. through the Hainanese chef and it's become something very uniquely Singaporean. This is a dish I remember having as a child. Um, and really, coming to Shashlik as a little, little girl with my parents was always like a special treat, you know? Mm. It's like, whoa, it's fancy dining in a Western-style restaurant. And you come and you feel so grown up because you have to use all the cutlery. So all these memories are totally flooding back. Although, this particular dining room now looks quite different from what I remember as a child. Although I have to say, look at that. That is original. These were the doors that led to the kitchen. The kitchen? Yes. I got a treat for you, Chef, because... I'm all used. Times have changed. Uh, some of the items I remember from the menu are not on the menu currently. Okay. But we've been given access into the kitchen, and you're going to meet the chef, and he's going to make us something very special. Okay, let's go, let's go. But can we finish this first? Okay, okay, let's see. <laughs> We got a bit sentimental when the last of the remaining owners decided to call it a day. Yeah. Um, and this is a place that we grow up. We have a lot of fond memories in here. So because my brother is in the restaurant business and he came to me, shall we run Shaslik and see if we can um, bring it back to sunshine again? Mm. So that was his exact words. And uh, why not? I don't know what I got myself into. Yeah. He knows, but I do not know. So that was that was nine years ago. Yeah. And uh, so uh, since then, there was no looking back. You know, yeah. Every day is a new day yeah. and uh, we've, we've been through a lot of ups and downs mm -hmm. and keep going. All around the restaurants are hints of this restaurant's charming history. From lanterns, to the wooden serving carts, to the old menus. But nothing's more charming than the old school service you get from one of their longest serving staff. Chasley, Iscovita Melvin, this Hello, is Chef Derek, Derek Alan's brother. Right. Oh, Alan's brother. Mm -hmm. okay. What's a brother tag team? All in a family. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so you're going to be making for us something that's not really on the menu anymore. Oh, yeah, you are preparing a couple pack stick today. <gasps> it's actually steak stuffed with uh, oysters. Yes! And red pieces of bacon around it. Everything tastes better with, with bacon. bacon. 
This is the tenderloin from Australia. Wow. I got it to see the hole here to stuff the oyster. This is freshly wow. flown from France. French yeah. oysters, ooh la la. So it's sweet. so cool that they use fresh shuckle oysters for this. Huh? Yeah, have you ever had a coffee bag? Never. So have coming you here is seen like... one before? No. Really? Yeah. This is one of those old school dishes that I think have fallen out of fashion. But I don't understand why, because it is delicious. Is it because it's very tedious to make? Is yeah, it correct. very tedious? It's quite time consuming. I think. How did you learn how to make this? Is this like um, a recipe from Shashlik that you kind of inherited? Yeah, that's, a, that's correct. Because I understand it's kind of like a family business. Your father used to work here. Yeah, correct. How did you end up in the kitchen as the chef in Shashlik? Uh, I was actually a trained chef in one of the restaurants. Mm -hmm. So when they retired, yeah. I just moved in instantly. That's so cool. Huh? Yeah, I wish my dad and I were in the okay. same industry. <laughs> so what was your dad doing in Shashlik when he was uh, working here? He's a chef waiter. I see. One yeah. fresh oyster, okay. wrap it in back bacon. Correct. It is quite tedious, look at that. It's so fiddly. Well, can you imagine if you got like a dinner for 50, <laughs> and you have to do 50 of this. <laughs> so when do you serve it? Do you ever serve it anymore? Uh, yeah, we have special requests. We will do it for them. Chef, what's that? Dark colour uh, liquid that you put on? It's actually soya sauce. Soya sauce? Yeah, more to Hungary sauce. You yeah. see, yeah, that's right. it's I like love the sauce. marriage of the two cultures, Russian okay. and Western and right, Hainanese. The stick now. That is, you stand back, huh? Woo! Look at that sizzle! Chef is quite savage. Huh? He marinated it in soya sauce, which is liquid, yeah. right? Then it's just straight into a hot pan of oil. So okay. now Chef needs the pan to be really hot yeah. to sear the outside of the meat yep. and to keep the juices inside, right? That's correct. I'm going to turn it over. Super hot, you know? I can see it. I love the smell. Yeah. I love the sizzle. Look at the browning on the outside. That's the mallard effect. Yeah. It's going to give us pure umami flavor. So I have a question. Yes. Yeah. It's such a thick cut. How are you going to get it cooked all the way through uh, without ruining the oyster? We had trial and error. We measure every temperature and the timing as well. Every stick has been measured. Oh. And what would you recommend people uh, order the meat? Medium rare. Medium rare. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... I like my steaks rare, Sorry. but... Yeah, it can be done rare. No, no, no. It can be no, done rare as well. I think well. you should just give us what you usually give your okay. customer. Yeah, so fun fact, if you guys didn't know, Denise like her steak blue. Yep. I yeah. like it really, 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 really rare. I, it won't I, I be had, this time round, but I think it'll be very surprised. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so, Chef, inside for how long? 10 minutes. I'm going to set the timer before okay. I forget. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Timer, okay. 10 minutes. About 350 degrees Celsius. I'm so yeah. enamored by this only because okay. I don't think I've ever seen this. is like a professional <laughs> kitchen timer because okay. there are so many okay, happening. Okay. Chef, so after the meat is uh -huh. uh, done, mm -hmm. is it served, what is it served with? Does it come with a sauce or uh, anything like it, that? We have a choice of our house sauce, pepper, mushroom or garlic sauce. Look how everything has just shrunk down to this beautiful disc. Oh, you can see that crust on the outside. Look at the juice. Look the hey, are you ready? Yes. I think these donuts you will like it, huh? Yeah. One perfect bite right there. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So, tender. The style of the show is still the juice, the quality of the beef, then the smokiness, saltiness of the bacon. Brings out the flavour of the beef. Yeah. Not too gamey. Yep. Then that sweetness of the oyster. Yep. Like, oh, yo. Just a little burst of sweet brine. It's, it's like their version of surf and turf. Totally. This is their three sauces. Mushroom sauce, yep. their signature oh, garlic shit. seasoning. Okay. And then the last is the pepper sauce. Okay, which one should I go for first? I think mushroom. Okay, mushroom. Yes, from left to right, I guess. <laughs> mm. I'll do the pepper mm. with a bit of the garlic. <laughs> Denise, you need to try the black pepper. It's not like a shortcut black pepper sauce, you know. It's really, right? Wow, that's legit good. Is there alcohol in there? Some kind of like wine? Yeah, it... I added red wine in it. Yeah. <gasps> no, I don't! <laughs> you like it so much, huh? <laughs> but of course, more flavor. It's so luxurious. Nice. Okay, but wait. Mm. Do you still have space in your stomach? You have more? 
Of course, it's just one steak. Look, we haven't even tried their signature namesake. Mm. We haven't had the shash link mm. yet. Okay. Now I got space. After you said it, signature, <laughs> got space. <laughs>
taking over and um, you know just continuing your dad's legacy what does the future of Shashlik look like I mean do you have plans goals are your children gonna take over <laughs> that's a very good question what's in future no it's a mystery nobody knows but I think for us is that we have something very special yeah. in our hand we have yes. a piece of heritage and personally I feel that Heritage is something to be passed on from one hand to another hand. Mm. So no one really owns heritage. Yeah. You can be a custodian of it at this point in time, mm. but you find someone worthy of it to continue after you. Oh, so, that's a very nice way to put it. Huh? Thank you. Wow. I, I really admire that kind of like spirit to just keep fighting on and in hopes that someone will also catch that fire, that blue fire, <laughs> to continue this uh, heritage. I want to thank you personally for taking on this daunting task of running this restaurant, keeping this heritage. Because if you didn't persevere with your brother, Denise wouldn't have a chance to bring me here. Yeah, thank you so very much. You're welcome. So now we've done the main course, Shall we do the dessert? Oh my gosh. There's still dessert. <laughs> There's still dessert. We ate so much already. Oh. No, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I know what dessert this is and you cannot miss it. It's like um, the fireworks at the end of a parade. Yes! This is their hottest seller. Auntie is actually making sure that it doesn't get overcharged. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so there's this crisp meringue shell that's been doused in rum set on fire and then inside... Is that ice beauty? cream? Yes. What? You know what? We are going back to my childhood and this is how I would have eaten right. it. Melty, marshmallowy meringue. I get the flame, you know. The meringue has this charred flavour. Mm. It goes very well with the sweetness. Yeah. It kind of balances because the char has a little bit of bitterness. And then warm on the outside but so cold on the inside. Yeah. It's like, wow. It's like a roller coaster in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Thin sponge. So good. Ice cream. Oh, and as a kid, to have a little bit of alcohol as well. Actually, most of the alcohol were burnt off by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think what, what's left over is the, the aroma of the rum. Mm. That's right. You know, one thing I notice about this sort of dessert is that you have to share it. You can't just eat it all by yourself. I'll be so upset if you don't share it. <laughs> and that's why, you know, all the family, nostalgia, the memories are really just locked into this one dessert. So, Melvin, happy that I brought you here. Very happy, very full. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for Thank today. you. Thank you both for coming. Yeah. It's like travelling back in time. Yeah. yeah, to my childhood, where everything was set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite true. <laughs>